back to learning some new skills that will help her succeed as a guide dog puppy and then a guide dog in the future. So we're just going to go over what we're what we've been learning and why it's important for our puppies to practice this. But first, I'm going to let her get a good scratch in the back. And then um, we'll go ahead and start her little learning session. So today we're going to be working with something that um, really helps them with their self-control. So we're working in a little bit of a busier environment um, instead of my house, which is fairly quiet with, you know, without any other people and animals in it. So we're working here because our puppies are expected to work in public. So we definitely want them to be acclimated to it at an early age. So we're in an area that has some traffic through it, but it's not too loud and too busy. So one of the things that we're going to be working on is having her um, touch her my fist with her nose. And then each time she does that, she's going to get a piece of kibble. So the reason that we do this is um, much nice. The reason that we do this behavior is to really help with, um, it makes a fun learning game. So it gets their attention pretty easily because it becomes more and more exciting the more they learn it because it's an easy task for them to do. So all she has to do is touch my fist. Nice. And then she gets a piece of kibble. So this can definitely play into their self-control. Nice. Pet dogs are allowed to kind of, when they're walking on the leash, they're allowed to be sniffing, they're allowed to be playing, they're allowed to be pulling on the leash, looking at different distractions. Where a guide dog puppy doesn't have that all the time. They get to have play time and they get to have free time. But when they're with their puppy raiser, they need to be focused and attentive to what we're showing them and what we're teaching them. And they really need to be on their best behavior. So this is a really cool tool that we can use to get their attention and make working through a distraction a really fun game. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll be using this tool and then we'll be showing you why it's useful when we're in public. Um, and so this is really fun. We start to make it really fun. We start to move it. And I always wait for her to make the choice. It's okay if she gets a little distracted. She's sniffing the ground a little bit. So we always want it to be her choice to do it. And then it helps them understand that they can make that choice. And then they get the reward for it. Nice. So she's still getting playtime at my house every day, multiple times a day, but she also comes to the office with me. So in my office, I have a crate that she can sleep in if she needs rest. And she has a ton of different Nile bones and toys. So she's learning and growing up in an environment that she'll most likely be in when she's with a client that's blind or visually impaired. So we want to set her up for success by exposing her to that environment at a very young age. Nice and getting her acclimated to hearing the noises of an office, uh, the hustle and bustle of everything. And then she'll actually start going to puppy classes with other puppies that are training to be guide dogs. Um, she'll start doing that next week. She just turned nine weeks old. So I wanna give her a little bit more time just to get used to me and to learn a couple different skills. Nice. So I'm keeping my it's pretty much in the same position right now. Nice. But as she gets older, I'll vary it to turn it into a game. So she's going to have to watch where my fist goes. And she's also going to have to ignore the different distractions. Nice. Good girl. So it's a really useful tool for self-control exercises. Guide dogs have to have really good self-control. If they're working in the city, they have to be working by pigeons and different smells and traffic and other people. And if they're working in a suburban environment, they're hearing cars, they're going to grocery stores, stuff like that. So this is a really neat tool that we can use with our puppies to turn walking by a distraction a really fun game. So all you have to do is start playing this game with them. Smudge. You got to think about it. Huh? And sometimes her little stubborn streak comes out. Are you done for the day?
Yeah, so she has a little black spot. It's just a birthmark. Um, some Labradors get spots like that. Um, you won't see this in the show ring, but because our dogs aren't going to dog shows or being registered with the, you know, certain breed clubs and stuff like that, we think it's just a beauty mark that makes her very distinctive. Yep, exactly. Hey, do you want to play? I wouldn't say impossible, but I would say it's most likely, um, it won't be a likely um, career path for that dog. Our puppies start learning these different skills and start being exposed to these different environments at a very young age. And most of our guide dog puppies um, are raised in environments like going into public and attending classes and learning these skills at a young age. And most of our guide dogs are placed with their clients by the time they're two to two and a half years of age. Um, so it would probably be a very stressful endeavor for a three to four year old dog to take on if um, they started to learn at that age. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know a lot of people that adopt dogs from shelters that are a little bit older, and then they work with them and they definitely use them as a therapy dog, taking them um, to different obedience classes to get them acclimated and well-behaved and socialized, and then passing different therapy dog tests so they can visit different environments like hospitals and classrooms and stuff like that to provide some puppy snuggles and love. Good girl. So, so we're working on her touching a fist with her nose. It's a way that we can get their attention when we're in public, and it's a game that we can play to regain their focus. So every time she touches my fist with her nose, she gets a piece of kibble. This will progress to different skills when she becomes a guide dog, but right now we're using it to get her focus regained on me and make it positive. We never force them to do anything. So I'm waiting for her to make the decision because we always want it to be fun and rewarding for them. So she's doing a really great job. She has really awesome focus. Um, and she's really thinking through how to get the piece of kibble from me. Nice. So she's a quick learner and a quick study. And she's very food motivated, which is what we want to see with our guide dogs. We like having dogs that love to work and love to work for food because it makes it a fun job for them. Smudge. Nice. Come on. You got to think about it. Nice. Good girl. Absolutely. So across the world, um, labs have been the most popular um, guide dog breed because they're smart, they're easy to train, they love working with people, and they love working for food. So it makes them a very desirable dog for guide dogs. They love working, they love being with people. So it's an ideal relationship for the dog and an ideal relationship for the handler. So you can see she's she's thinking it through. Nice. And, you know, we don't try to push her through anything. And we make these, um, you know, learning sessions fun. And she gets a little break with her toy. And um, it's, it's a way for her to really learn and adjust and bond with me. And then we'll start using that tool in public. And you'll start seeing that in the next couple weeks as well. 